When I was in the U.S. visiting my family um, in 2012, I went to a children's museum and I have to say I was blown away by what I saw. It was a space in which every child was able to access everything equally and it brought parents and children and the community together in one space. And I just thought to myself, we have nothing like this in Johannesburg. As a parent, I would love something like this in Johannesburg. But more than that, I saw that, it, that the need for it was beyond my own family. It was really for the children of the city and this country. Um, and so in that experience of being in that children's museum on that December day in 2012, I decided to quit my job as a journalist and Play Africa was born. Most of the kids that we're accommodating come from a very poor background and some are orphans. We really don't have places for children to play in Alex. When you look around Alex, we have no space at all. In one piece of land, you've got houses, shacks, everything is occupied. So the place for children to play is in the street. They play soccer, cricket, whatever they want to play, they play in the street, which is very dangerous for them. I think particularly in the poverty-stricken areas, there's still not enough early childhood development programs. Whilst learning concepts are important, play is even more valuable within that early childhood development boundary. So play could mean different things. It could be building blocks but in a playful way. It could be reading a story to them but in a playful way. It could be puppetry but in a playful way. If those children do not get the early stimulation that they require, it's definitely going to impact on the rest of their schooling. So learning through play is absolutely critical in early childhood development. For many people, the apartheid spatial planning remains a part of their daily lived reality and quite frankly, uh, you know, even 20 years into democracy, the practice of locating the poor on the periphery simply because of the availability of cheap land uh, has continued. Space can be used to transcend the boundaries that are self-imposed and to break down the barriers and the fears that people hold about each other, about the unknown, about who the other is. Uh, and Play Africa certainly will be one of those catalytic spaces um, for, for the country. The idea of a, of a children's museum um, and all that, that this is supposed to entail would be fabulous because it would be a different kind of space where people could actually be together as, as families and as, and as individuals. Um, that's not a shopping mall. South Africans do shopping malls very well. We don't have enough of these kinds of spaces actually is the truth. Um, and so I think that's, that's really promising. And if, if, if it can also be a place that actually gets past the class segregation too, in other words, uh, you know, if it's, if it's basically accessible to people regardless of their income levels, that would be great. There's no space like this in the entire country. And so when you start to imagine and you show people images of spaces like this that exist around the world, that are open right now, and you say we could bring this idea, this concept, and make it truly South African and bring it here. You, know, you get this real sense of possibility and, and excitement. It's a 5,000 square meter building with a bigger outdoor area that's a children's park designed to ensure that the cost to get into a space like this is not going to be a barrier for a single family. That's really an important component. And when we talk about the scope of what we're doing, we're actually talking about serving 200,000 people at minimum a year. So this is a really high impact innovation that will really affect not just a few people here and there or the wealthiest South Africans or those for whom um, you know, early learning is already taken care of. What we're really designing is something that's going to draw people from all backgrounds together. What we see for Play Africa and what is possible is a space that is designed for families where children and their caregivers feel equally welcome in the space and could have fun, could connect, could connect firstly to each other, then families connecting to other families and 
that's ultimately what builds communities. What, as adults, we've forgotten to do is to play, is to not be self-conscious, not be aware. There is a view and a, a, a perception of the African child being abused, neglected, malnourished, and not being a child. In the way in which I was brought up, my child was your child, and your child was my child. And children were children. I would like to restore that back to them. We believe that when people leave Play Africa, they're going to walk out with this real deep sense of the power with inside themselves and inside their families, their own families, their communities, and inside this country. I think Play Africa is about saying, you're so much more. Uh, be everything you're capable of being. Um, when you're a child, but more so, take that experience into your adulthood and change society for the better. I think what Play Africa is planning to do can bring the country together. In playing there is communication. They communicate. That's where you learn to accept one another. Where you learn to understand one another. Learn other people's culture, language, and as young as they are. That's where everything starts. Because they're together. They play together and you need them to play together. They become brother and sister. I think it's important.